Liberals, NDP, Bloc, and the Greens all try to manipulate the situation with foreign interference to force Pierre Polyev into doing something that he doesn't want to do. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. Well, as I'm sure many of you are aware, the RCMP has leveled accusations at India. Pretty serious and pretty severe uh, things they're accused of. And for a minute, the, all the parties got together in Canada and they agreed that there would be a path forward on having a look at this problem. And then, of course, just seconds away from adjourning for the day after agreeing to the motion, the far left had to collude to try and force the center and the conservatives into doing whatever it is that they want to. They have such issues with control. They have such issues with, peop- with acceptance of people that don't necessarily agree with the way that they do things. They can't withstand an opportunity to try and and, and force people into living a lifestyle that they don't want to. Now, that goes in stark contrast with many of the other positions that the the NDP and the uh, Liberals take. I I understand that. And I'm going to start talking about that in a minute, like not in this video, but shortly. In this video, I just want to show you the playing politics. I want to show you how it exactly played out. So, like I said, there was a 1064 and they were having a motion and all of the parties agreed that they were going to call this list of witnesses and how much time they were going to have each witness for. And it was going to be deputy ministers and ministers. And they were going to be talking about this overriding issue of foreign interference in the Canadian political and Canadian day-to-day living. Everything from the Chinese interference right through. And of course, the... Just as the chair was about to slam the gavel, just as he said, we're adjourned for the day, the NDP pipes up, the liberal all of a sudden stops slamming the gavel, and the motion that was introduced is pretty, I mean, it's nothing but politics that they're trying to do. There's nothing in it for anybody but them. I'm going to let you watch it. So here we are. Well, you're going to hear him. Uh, is there any more uh, any more questions or discussion on this uh, on the amendment? Sorry, on the motion as amended. Seeing none, I call a call a vote on this. All in favor? All opposed? Thank you very much. Uh, the motion is carried, and that wraps up our business. Thank you very much, all of, and we are adjourned. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, go ahead. I had my hands up. I had oh, my. Sorry, hand up. I apologize. So that was MP McAllister, the guy who caused, called the whole meeting together in the first place from the, from the NDP. And you could see that the chair was just about to, to adjourn for the day. But true to form, they couldn't resist an opportunity to introduce a new motion because of their fixation and obsession with having everyone live the life that in, in a way and in a degree and in a position that they must agree with. If they don't agree with it, then they have to steep, just keep starting trouble for you and then they wonder why canadians are fed up with the all with the whole process and fed up with their parties in general i'm gonna let you hear it mp McAllister. that's who was speaking and that's who you'll see here in a second thank you um just related to the uh same i would point out that you can see that he's reading from a monitor so he had this typed out so this wasn't off the cuff they had prepared for this subject matter that we have before us i also want to just put uh, one more motion on the record for for colleagues to consider uh, it is related to the subject matter at hand uh, the chair sorry the clerk has digital and paper copies so i'll read it out as follows that given the rcmp report on violent criminal activities linked to agents of the government of india from october 14th 2024 the Hogue Commission's identification of foreign interference activities by Russia, Pakistan, China, and Iran, and the National Security and Intelligence Committee of Parliamentarians' special report on foreign interference in Canada's democratic processes and institutions, the chair reports to the House that the committee calls for all federal party leaders to apply for the appropriate security clearance level in the next 30 days, in order to review classified information and take necessary actions to protect Canadians. 
Mr. Chair, I think it's important that we move this motion because all federal party leaders have now received security clearance to review unredacted briefings on this very serious matter, except for one. And I think it's high time uh, that given the revelations that we heard on Monday, that we present a united front. And I think it's incredibly important for this committee to report back to the House that we recommend this course of action. And I will leave it there, Mr. Chair. I think the motion is self-explanatory. Thank you. Well, I think the motion is self-explanatory too. I think that the federal government has been trying to take get Pierre Polyev to take the top secret for more than a year now, for probably closer to two years. They've been in the House of Commons saying that he should take it so he can read the various and different reports. First, it, the same attempt was made when they were talking about the China reports. I think that we're, we're looking at just the NDP attempting to do an end run, attempting to force on to Pierre Polyev something that he doesn't want. Why can't they just respect the fact that he doesn't want? I mean, the, the guy says it himself, right? There's four of the five leaders have all got this uh, top secret and nothing has changed. So they all have it and it's absolutely nothing. They've done nothing with it. It's a lame duck. So why is he trying to do it? Probably so he can muzzle Pierre Polyev. What other reasons is there? I mean, when has these four parties in the last nine years got together on something and said, hey, we need the conservatives to come in on our side with us? When? Just name me one example, because I've looked and I've scanned and I've thought in my mind and I in my head and it's like, nope. These four groups have been working together for nine years now and we can see the state of the country as a result. And at no time have they ever said, hey, let's get the conservatives on our side. Hey, let's get bring in so that everybody can be together. Nope, that has never once happened. And I don't see how this could be any different. Now, without skipping a beat, even though the, the ambush was laid, the uh, conservatives had a response. And I'll let you play it, in its, I'll show it to you in its entirety. Um, this does relate to the matter at hand, I think, very directly, so I will consider it uh, in order. And I see Mr. Lloyd wishes to speak to this. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, it's our very strong contention as Conservatives that uh, anyone, any member of Parliament, any uh, member of our political parties that are uh, colluding with foreign powers uh, to advance the interests of, of a foreign nation's agenda in our country need to be named so that Canadians can know and be fully transparent and clear the name, the good name of the Parliament of Canada, uh, which has been sullied uh, these past many months by innuendo and, and allegations that have been made uh, without full evidence that we haven't seen. And uh, it's the contention of the Conservative Party of Canada that we need to release all those names so that we can, we can uh, take appropriate action and move on. Um, we strongly believe that, uh, that a motion like this, which, which attempts to force the hand of, of all federal leaders on the security clearance front, is, is, a, is an attempt to muzzle uh, the leader of the opposition from speaking out on the very important issue of foreign interference. We have to remember, uh, myself, I was raising the issue of foreign interference, interference at this committee years ago, and we were assured repeatedly by ministers of this government that foreign interference was not taking place in Canada's election. We were being reassured that foreign interference was not serious in Canada. This was just two years ago. And due to leaks uh, from CSIS and our security agencies, and we have now come to learn that that was not the case, that there has been uh, widespread allegations of foreign interference. And, and sadly, today, uh, with the recent RCMP announcement on Monday, it's escalated to the lives of Canadians being threatened allegedly by a foreign government. And how has this been allowed to happen after nine years? Like I remember back in 2015 working in the previous government that we, this, this would have been unheard of that uh, foreign governments were threatening the lives of Canadian citizens. And yet after nine years under this liberal government, uh, due to their complete lack of action and complete lack of proactive activity to protect uh, Canada, that uh, that this has just been allowed to proliferate in this country. And, and it's not just allegations against India. There's a number of countries that see Canada as a completely soft target uh, for foreign interference. And it's leadership. It's lack of leadership in Canada 
under this liberal government, under this liberal prime minister, who has now decided to try to weaponize the issue of foreign interference for his own political ends to distract from the very real problems that his leadership is facing, even within his own party, to try to weaponize the issue of national security uh, for his own partisan ends, it's, it's, it's frankly, um, it's disgusting. I find it disgusting what this prime minister has done. And so I'll be moving forward with an amendment uh, to this uh, motion that we release the names of, of all uh, members of parliament, all parliamentarians who are alleged to have interfered with, uh, who have colluded, knowingly colluded with foreign powers. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And the room went a little frosty after that. So for one minute, they were all rubbing each other's shoulders and everybody was on board. And then just like that, the NDP trashed it in an effort to play politics with the very important and very severe issue of how we are, as Canadians, inundated by foreign powers attempting to play inside of our sandbox and the the idea that our politicians are so immature the idea that our government is treats treats diplomacy like they're like they're playing in some in the cool club the cool kids club at the at the elementary school lunchroom is a serious problem these countries that are coming in here they don't take it a joke they take it quite seriously no matter who it is whether it be india whether it be pakistan russia china all of the list of countries and and i'm sure there's others there's no doubt in my mind that it's a list much longer than what you hear they take it very seriously they have men who people who are trained for these things they got all of the stuff that they need to sort of make this stuff happen the fact that they've been getting away with it for 10 years and the liberal government did nothing about it the fact that they've been getting away with it for 10 years and the liberal government stopped didn't do anything about it kept a a, a warrant to have one of the, a very strong liberal backer looked at by CSIS. CSIS requested that they have the warrant to arrest this guy or at least look into him just like they did for with india the liberal government let it sit there for 2 months 54 days all of a sudden, when it's in their camp, it's not a big deal. But if they can see a chance to maybe swing some of the Southern Ontario vote their way or swing it over to Jagmeet Singh, I don't know why anybody would vote for these guys based on the idea that like, if you don't care about money, I suppose you should vote far left. But if you care about a house and a home and having a good economy, then you can see where that, where that leads us. Outside of that, the only thing that they have is identity politics, which is what you see going on here, an attempt to say to ourselves, oh, look, Pierre Polyev won't get this security clearance. Okay, so let's just say for the sake of argument that he doesn't get the security clearance, which he hasn't yet, and I don't see in, any, in the near future that he's going to. So let's just agree with that. You four leaders, those four other leaders, May, uh, Blanchet, uh, Trudeau and Singh having this 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 vault vaunted uh, security clearance. What has it accomplished? Did those guys knowing about the foreign interference stop any of it? Oh no, you can't stop it because if you stop it, then somebody will know about it. So what are you on about? What are you talking about? All you are is trying to change the narrative away from the fact that. Not only have you let Canadians down, you've let down new Canadians, you've let down nationalized Canadians, you, you, you cannot keep our country safe from foreign interference. And you think in your mind that by detracting from that, by not looking at that problem straight on and head on and directly, the Canadians are all of a, all of a sudden going to think to themselves, oh, let's vote for them? That you're all of a sudden going to be telling yourself that it's not such of a big deal? I grant you that maybe when you're when you're comparing the interference from India versus not having a place to live or living in a tent city or not having the you know living in your car or not having the money that you can need to live your life or having everything being 10 times more expensive than it was just 5 years ago perhaps it's not such of a big deal but if it's not such a big deal in that situation then why bother playing politics with it the fact that we took this very serious issue and tried to make it all about, again, trying to force Pierre Polyev into doing something that he doesn't want to do, right? You're trying to force him into something that he doesn't want to do. That doesn't sound very democratic to me. All right, I'm going to wrap here. I want to thank you for listening. I'll talk to you next time.